sense. And so, yeah, the vulnerability of the menstrual products and the vulnerability of the endocrine disrupting chemicals, because it's almost like it's homeopathic in the wrong direction. Yeah. Right. It's we're, we're playing with the master commanders of our entire biology. And without giving that a break, we're literally sprinting towards ovarian cancer to endometriosis to infertility on the female side and absolutely on the male side. You know, if I was an alien and I looked at the numbers, I would be like, oh, you guys are trying to get rid of yourself. <laughs> On this episode of The Dr. Tina Show, I am so delighted to be sitting down with my old friend, Darren Olean. You may know Darren better as the co-host of the Emmy Award-winning Netflix docuseries, Down to Earth with Zac Efron, or you may know him as the superfood hunter. He spent nearly 20 years exploring the planet, looking for superfoods, and wrote a book called Super Life. You may know him as the host of The Darren Olean Show, or you may know him best for his latest book, fatal consequences. In this book and on this episode, we discuss the pitfalls of everyday toxins, as well as common sense ways to limit your exposure and live a more toxin-free life. Darren and I go way back. Uh, I was actually speaking at a conference in Portland, Oregon called Food is Medicine, and Darren came up and introduced himself. We've been friends ever since, and he was my first interview ever in an online platform. So I got to interview him. I was super nervous, and he's the nicest guy. I always learn so much from him, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Let's jump in. I unfollowed everything, and I told my husband, just keep me abreast. Like, I don't want to know. I don't right. care. I don't want to know that the news was so overwhelmingly horrible by the time I stopped looking at the data about the vaccines that I was like, yeah, good you luck. Know, I, <laughs> like, good luck, what, everybody. <laughs> I, I think what you're saying is really true because I had my own awareness of like, so, you know, I, from a large perspective, I'm pretty, for me, I'm informed enough to support the things that I want to support. Right. So from one perspective, I can put it and it's like I, I, I want to support and I have ways in which I'm cultivating that and doing that of people having, you know, health, uh, water, power, food, shelter, all the things that the certain organizations in the world have claimed that they care and have failed miserably, call it the UNs and everything else. And so if the time and the algorithms shift over the next few months or whatever, it doesn't change my commitments. My commitments are the same. So if I continuously feed my brain full of these polarized just fear, it, does, it actually inhibits me in being able to commit and give energy towards those things that for me it's not changing, right? Yes. It's, you know, everything of how to develop and support those things may change, but that's not going to be informed by the mainstream anything. Yes. So it's like, what do I really need to know? You could also have faith if I really need to know something that I will find out, but it's not going to be through learning anything of any significance really through the mainstream anything right so so why not i second your your idea of like i don't need it because uh, yeah. I, I know what i'm committed to doing and i'm gonna keep fucking doing it yeah yep and then i look down at my puppy and he reminds me of life and i'm like oh puppy happy i'm gonna <laughs> I'm just yeah. gonna focus there because it's I, I can't do anything to change any of this. I think that's what really hit me. It was, I can't. And, and I get messages from people every day that are like, you know, you saved my life. Like I, I completely overhauled my life and it, it was because of the information you were putting out and, you know, you saved my family during COVID and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's great and all, but at the end of the day, the hit I took was so profound. I mean, I had the fucking IRS come to my house, Darren. Like, I got politically targeted. I had a warrant out for me for the state of Oregon over taxes I actually had already paid. I mean, they really came after me to shut me up. And it shut me up. I mean, it wore me out. And I was like, this is not 
was it worth it? I don't know. I mean, I'm glad to know I was on the right side of history, but at the end of the day, most people just either want to forget that it happened and move on. Even the people who were, you know, team freedom, like they just want to forget it happened. And then the other people will never ever come around because they can't, because it'll crush their souls to know that they were complicit and responsible in that way. So, you know, I really, I'm just going to sit back and let karma, (laughs) I'm just going to let karma play out. I'm like, I'm out. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing that I could. And and revenge is unbecoming and it ages you. That was it. I was like, I am aging. This is taking my beauty away from me. And I refuse to let ugly people take my beauty away from me. So like, I'm not letting ugly, unhealthy people ruin me. (laughs) Well, here's, here's the thing. I'm sorry that that happened to you. And in, in this kind of illusion, delusion of a free democracy, And I think the thing that has helped me through just the curtain that has been, for those of us who want to see it, has just been ripped down and you're seeing the puppets behind it. The people that I still help, well, that are doing incredible things every, every day and I get to interact with them or I find out, oh, wow, this company raising hundreds of millions of dollars is creating an algae-based alternative to PFAS, which is a direct thing that I talk about in the book. And you're like, and there's a lot of money behind it. And when they have committed to it, it's actually going to be cheaper than this gnarly forever chemical. And it's a clean product. And the biggest companies on the planet are already signing on to it. That's awesome. So you're you're like, and that's one. I just got off the phone. I can't out it publicly, but with my good friend, Paul Hawken, who wrote, you know, Drawdown and Regeneration and has been a a maverick in uh, education around environmental issues and problems and finding solutions and everything else. He's working with some of the top companies on the planet who are committing to doing cleaner ways of growing food and like legitimately, like not an ESG bullshit, carbon credit, blah, 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 blah. (laughs) We're talking real stuff because they gave enough time to hear someone like him tell the numbers and literally show the numbers. When you do the right thing, when you follow nature, nature is so abundant that if you continue to go down the implosion road of grab a little profit over and above and really at the face of destruction of a human and the animals and the pollution of the planet, inevitably it has to implode. It has to. When it does, who knows? But when you actually can turn on and go in the direction of a whole, for lack of a better word, a regenerative, more nature filled way, it is so abundant because yeah. it's that it's not, it's to say that when we follow regenerative practices, permaculture practices, they're literally by definition, there is no waste. Right. Waste in society is literally just equals laziness <laughs> because ultimately there is no waste. It's just a matter of, oh, we decided to cut all these corners and then now we have 450 million metric tons of plastic waste on the planet <laughs> every year, right? So that is just a massive, lazy, profit-centered we don't give a shit about the downstream effect of anything when in fact there's ways to solve these kind of things and these things are always connected to the destruction of the human and by the by their mere creation of them destructive to the planet pollution pollution as within so without so like when i was writing this book about everything from pfos as a might as an organism of a person consuming these things it's you're seeing this world in which oh this is destroying your biology and in the 
the eco the ecological system it's also destroying the ecological system so and that's where i don't like where the these um you know just to say a little bit about this you know when people uh they want to lump things into oh yeah because it's climate change and it's right. all this stuff and it's like now now people who i don't agree with they're taking those terms and making it into whatever the hell their agenda is they're trying to do but for me i go back to my minnesota roots i go back to common sense i go listen polluting yourself with consuming water that's chelated petroleum plasticizers and phthalates and PFAS and consuming that is a really stupid idea. And the mere fact of creating that is toxic to the world. So that's where, uh, and you can say the same argument for regenerative agriculture, right? When people make that step of, oh yeah, because it's drawing down CO2. Well, that's a, that's a side effect of of a process that follows nature. It's not the gold state. It's not the thing to do. It's like, if you follow regenerative principles, this is a big topic, but just to summarize, you're building soil, right? You build the nutrients in that soil. You plant a seed. That seed is now able to uptake micronutrients and, and develop itself. Number one, you draw in more water and re water retention. You build a strong plant that has in, in, inside of it adaptogenic properties to create the complexity of, call it antioxidants, micronutrients. And so the plant is stronger itself, which then needs less and less input of yes. some fucking radical thing. And then when you bring in more regenerative permaculture principles you're using plants to help plants you're using adaptogenic properties that are followed from nature and you use less and less if at all inputs from outside to control and by the way you give sovereignty back to the farmer and let the farmer be the farmer you have a stronger plant so when you're a person in the middle of the country who's buying their produce and the farmer was the farmer because they've been doing it for generations that way. Now you have more nutrients and you're not getting blasted with glyphosate and other pesticides, astrazine and other pesticides and herbicides that are neutering our society and creating a whole other side effect that through following those natural principles, you natural create balance within the ecosystem. So anyway, that's just a, a quick summary to, to say that when we divorce ourselves from these things, you have that proverbial laundry list of side effects that that you know show up on the television set of another drug or another way of doing things. And then the lazy version is we have to then deal with the side effects in our society. And again, going back to the idea of a plastic water bottle and shipping water around the planet, it's just a very lazy uh, and insane idea. Um, so that kind of encompasses the book in the sense that the speaking of the apathy, we're all born into this, you know, Tina, we're born into this kind of world in which has been the industrial revolution has been pushing this uh, GDP idea at the expense of our health and the society. So I wanted to just really take the normal things we're doing every day, like putting on deodorant, putting dental floss, using toothpaste, uh, washing our hair, uh, putting on clothes, using uh, devices that have, you know, electromagnetic radiations and just going, okay, this is what we're doing. This is society. We need to actually then turn and look at it because a lot of these things have no regulation or at least they're not being enforced and it's affecting us and it's affecting us in a big way. So that was the elephant in the room for me to just start having this conversation that a normal society can look at when you can look at like, 
maybe don't put aluminum salts under my armpit, <laughs> right. you know, just well, so it... that I don't embarrass myself and have sweat <laughs> under my armpit. Well, I appreciate you writing this because it's, I mean, I've been, you know, I've known you a long time and I've been beating this drum for decades earlier than that. And people just, I'm shocked that we're in 2023, almost 2024 now, and people don't know the basic stuff that we know. And, you know, we used to get called hippies for it, but it's like, I remember learning this stuff in the nineties. I know that still was pretty late, like early nineties when I met my mentor and I just wished I was shocked then. And so I did, you know, made a lot of changes in my life and those became normal things in my household. And it took me a while to convince my family to come around and they're pretty okay. You know, not, uh, my daughter was raised up on it. She should know better yet. I walk into her apartment and she's still using all this scented, horrible crap. And I'm like, what are you doing? Do you like your ovaries? Do you want to have healthy children someday? Like what, like this isn't a negotiable, like I'm not trying to be like the hippie crunchy mom here, but come on. But that we're now to see this stuff talked about online, like it's novel for people. It's just these completely novel concepts for people that like the stuff in my skin. And then you see companies that are just you know, we've heard the term greenwashing. I think it gets overused, but man, it's bad. People don't realize just because it looks like a nice package and the company's touting less toxic versions doesn't mean they're still not toxic, you know, when you go reading the ingredients. So I know this is overwhelming. That's my point to this rant. I know that this is really overwhelming to the average consumer and the average person, but it's, you know, it's baby steps. And the first step is knowledge, just yeah. knowing what you're getting into. I had a class at in naturopathic college. It was crazy. It was from 730 in the morning till 930, one day a week. And it was just one quarter. And the first hour, she would tell you everything that was toxic that you were using, like literally like pro she just slide after slide of product after product and how bad it was for you, what it was doing to your endocrine system, what, it, you know, this is in the early 2000s. And we would leave during the first hour break crying. We'd be outside in the hallway. People would be crying. And like, I've used that my whole life. What have I done to myself? And then the second hour is what you could do about it. And strangely, you know, there isn't a lot of interventions kind of, you know, kind of, I think that society at large believes that doctors can wield a magic wand and poof, this will come out of your body. But some of these chemicals are really in there and now they're in everybody at decently high levels, right? I mean, glyphosate is in everyone and these PFAS are in everyone and it's in our breast milk and it's coming through and all that. And we're putting, you know, glyphosate laden tampons up our hoo-ha and, but guess what works? The same stuff that, you know, I know you're a really healthy guy and you and I have been kind of preaching the same similar stuff for a long time. Like you got to move, you got to sweat, you got to lift weights, you got to get sun, you got to, you know, that's what ultimately is going to move this stuff out of people's bodies as much as we can. Um, it's not magic detox shakes and what, you know, what, I mean, there's, there's helpful interventions, but not hugely if the person's continuing to yeah. have well, the exposure. Well, that's the key, right? It's the exposure. If you're constantly not, if you're willing to just change one thing, like you said, it's one thing at a time. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's shocking to, to become aware of this stuff. And the one hand you got to deal with, you've been duped. Yeah. There, there's no FDA approved to anything. Yeah. Right? They, 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 they have like one and a half people to like enforce anything so uh so it doesn't exist no supplements are fda approved like it, it, nothing and you know the you know it, you know going back to the 90s i think that my father who was a high functioning professor at the university of minnesota I dedicate this book to him because he all of a sudden, and I was at university. So I'm at school. My dad basically says, I think I've discovered what's going on. I have like, I, I can't think I have brain fog. My immune system's under stress. And my dad discovered he has got multiple chemical sensitivity and he was forced to retire. Wow. And thank God the university of Minnesota acknowledged that he had a real case because he was a professor. So he's like, you want data? Here's some data, right? <laughs> and and that was the sh first shock for me because in order to be around my father, in the last maybe 
15 years of his life, I had to unsent myself. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and then you're like, wait a minute, what? Uh, and like you said, it takes a bit to grok that this is even a thing. And I think the most powerful thing we can do is proximity and uh, less exposure and duration of that exposure. So how close you are to these things, they're around you. What are you showering in? What are you drinking? What are you filter your things in? What are your food uh, connected to vis-a-vis what package is it on that slippery surfaces full of PFAS and phthalates and BPAs and BPHs and all of this, you know, whack-a-mole um, that's going on. And, you know, we used to always say it's on the back, you know, just be aware of what's on the back of the package. Uh, well, sorry that many of these chemicals uh, are not on the back of a package. Yeah. Um, they're in the, they're in the packaging. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're they're in the packaging, and they're also in the chemical reactions of these products that are being created, right? Yeah. Triclosan in uh, beauty products, and the PFOS is not on the back of anything, right? And you know, you don't want to what you, your makeup. You don't want that to you know streak. Well, it's full of PFOS, right? And so we're slathering this stuff on, and the fact, yeah, Tina, it's like. I I can't, you would appreciate this, I think, more than anybody. So two and a half years of writing this book, 15 to 20 researchers, and I am i don't take, for a year and a half, I never took a weekend off, because I was like, and then, so I would just zone out on the weekends, because I spend a long, long period of time, and as I'm reading through just ridiculous amounts of research, I like I couldn't help but to just when you literally look under the cover, I just start swearing. I'm like, I, what the hell is going? Because they know about it. Yeah. Like they 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 know it's there. They call, even proudly calling it out, like some blog post uh, or the WHO probable likely uh, carcinogen, and then yet no one's taking the PFOS out. No one's taking the phthalates out no no one's taking the reactive oxygen species from the chlorine in the water they're not doing anything about it. like and that's what the you know scratching your head going and then finally it's like i didn't want to write this book because i didn't want to even i wish it didn't exist right but as you know you just like well if something's occurring and you just pretend it's not there. That's it's not the best uh, proactive thing to do because you're still being in, affected by that thing that you're just in your mind pretending isn't there. So for me, you know, having a father that ultimately uh, I believe picked up, you know, a drink after 30 years of sobriety because he was so depressed through all of this toxic exposure and ultimately died of alcoholism that that I, I had to I was compelled to spend two and a half years writing this book I was compelled to and this is the like everyone who wants health you have to turn into the in, this invisible elephant in the room you mm-hmm. know all these biohackers that want to sell a pill and a thing and blah 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 it's like you know, I always find it funny when the, you know, your Bluetooth and your things and all that stuff. Well, all that stuff is showing also a effect of motility and testosterone of that electromagnetic field. So like the very thing you're trying to optimize is being undercut by this by the system or the product potentially by using it. So it's like we have to look at elimination of certain things in order to optimize as well. So this invisible world of chemicals and fragrances and uh, ultimately 60 to 80,000 chemicals blasted in us every year, we just have to look at ultimately uh, waiting around for the agencies to change is just not a, you know, not something I'm interested in. And if they wanted to change it, it would have already been changed. Oh yeah, they're not going to do anything about it. 
it's it all comes down to money. It's like when it finally is going to if it costs them something, then they might change. And that's usually only going to come out of a lawsuit or some massive uprising, which most humans I mean, we saw from the past four years now that humans are pretty complacent and don't really want to admit there's a problem. And so it's just a matter of like, okay, well, good luck, (laughs) because this is really happening, whether you want to believe it is or not, you know, and that's the thing. It's really happening, whether you want to believe it is or not. And these companies are either I mean, there are some companies that I love that are truly dedicated to clean products and they use glass and they, you know, they go above and beyond, but these things are expensive, right? It's that adds to cost, it adds to cost of the product, shipping, all the things. And so it's not really accessible to everybody. So then we get into this kind of like tit for tat battle with, and I see it so much on social media. It really frustrates me because, you know, I was in bankruptcy with a small daughter and starting my practice and broke as you know, broke AF. And I still prioritized what I needed to because it was important to me because I knew better. But you see it on social media. It's like, oh, you have privilege because you can make these. Somebody tries to do a reel on a clean versus a dirty product. And people say, well, we're doing the best we can. And how dare you? And we're financially compromised. I get it with inflation, especially right now, the way things are. But it doesn't mean we can't. Uh, My advice always is to like do less. Like if you can't afford expensive, clean makeup, then just stop wearing makeup or wear less makeup, like less hair products, less. I used to use five different hair products on my hair to get the frizz out. And then I finally quit coloring it and quit putting shit all over it. And now I need like one little, I need like five drops of the serum. (laughs) That's super (laughs) non-toxic. It comes in a glass bottle and I have the same bottle for like three years. (laughs) So like. We can do less and we can consume less. We don't need to be eating a lot of processed packaged foods. Like don't eat that shit anyway. You know, like don't, I don't, I mean, I know this sounds kind of snarky, but truly that's how I had to resolve it in my household was like, we just don't need this stuff. Like do less. I don't know. What do you say to that? Cause I realize people need to use diapers and I know you have a, I want to ask you about diapers. Cause I saw you on my friend Courtney's podcast talking about that, but like, the things that we think we need, I think a lot of it we don't need. And I think we're getting a lot of toxicity that way. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a very important part of the conversation. That's why in a lot of the solution section of the book, I put a lot of DIYs. Like you can DIY yourself to hell, hydrogen peroxide and borax. Yeah, <laughs> fixes your everything. <laughs> yeah, like that's the, you, those, are uti- you, those are utilities. Yes. Those are basically laundry <laughs> detergent, cleaning products plumbing products like like it, it you know and that's like a, a few bucks you right yep. so you can get big pails of this stuff uh you know uh, organic white vinegar is fantastic amen you know? so, yeah you know? so there's a lot of power and essential oils you can light up your place so imagine like the, i always like looking at the exponential change when you eliminate the toxicity and just this dopamine effect of that's the way I've programmed myself to feel like my place is clean Mm -hmm. and you've eliminated the toxic exposure and then you've added like a parasympathetic beautiful response of like a rose or a lavender in your environment so now all of a sudden you've lowered your toxic exposure and amplified and benefited you so the swing of your everyday, all day environment now is huge. The yes. change is massive because these things are small choices every day, all day. Because a lot of these things have biological and chemical half lives in the body, mm-hmm. like a lot of parabens and phthalates. Your body can process that stuff. The problem is we're loading ourselves up. It's the shampoo, it's the lotion, it's the makeup, and we're just constantly, so the body is constantly being stressed so back to the question so there's diy solutions like crazy that are really cheap and i think parents with their children you can teach them how to do this stuff and it can be a fun kind of project and then um the people that can afford pay for it like do it and then as we scale as we vote with those dollars, then yes. the, the, that, that becomes the swing where people 
are then more able to afford because the prices are coming down because more people are buying them. It's the laws of economics as well. So yes, it, can everyone afford like, I love this company, Mana Vitality. It's got She Legit and Deep Sea Minerals. These guys went all over the world for the cleanest, you know, micronutrients you can add to. It's not just Celtic sea salt and throwing in your like it's you're paying for the delivery of the Himalayan She Legit and from the deep sea. You're paying for that. I will pay for that, right? Yeah, I want that because I I want those things in my life. I want to so. The more we pay for that, the more other products can start to come online. So that's what I say. The people that can't afford find a way to, to take a step towards the thing. I was similar in college. Like I wasn't going to compromise. I was going to do everything I can to eat good and not just eat crap. Because the more I was learning and, you know, breaking free of uh, middle America, upbringing the more i was like oh my god i gotta take care of what i'm putting in my mouth and i was a poor college kid trying to do his best and just again do your best forget the rest that's it it's the person in the mirror man like having an argument with some random stranger on social media is not it's like what is that right like like, how about you just look at yourself in the mirror and just do your best man yep like yep. filter your water so now your whole family isn't drinking toxic water because it's great we have on demand water in our first world situation but it's not clean it's not it's full of glyphosate and pfos and pharmaceuticals and everything else so hey for a few hundred bucks distill your water or reverse osmosis and then add some bioavailable electrolytes not some super supplement you can literally right. just add you know unrefined clean celtic himalayan salt and virtually be done with it so and now put it in a glass container and now you just you've eliminated toxic water and you've now created a super hydrative water for yourself and your family so these things you know, wasting the energy of yourself arguing for something that's not good for you anyway, and just not the best use of your time anyway. I fully agree. And you hit on a point, which I realized, you know, we are such a fast fashion, quick consumer kind of society. And I joke that, you know, I use the analogy of denim. Denim is such a massive, massive pollutant industry, right? And If you were to buy a really nice pair of jeans, like anyone who owns a $200 pair of jeans knows what I'm talking about. I know a lot of people shriek and say $200 jeans. I could never afford that. Well, I couldn't either when I bought my first $200 pair of jeans, but you know what? It's the only jeans I needed for like years, (laughs) right? Like one or two pairs of good denim will last you a decade. Honestly, even if you wear a ton of denim, right? And it makes a huge difference. And so it's like investing in a good product from a good company once. And like you said, you know, buy a water filter, buy some glass bottles. I I bought that for my daughter last year. I bought her a good water filter with some glass bottles. So she likes her water cold. She loves the taste of the water filter. So she bottles it up and puts it in the fridge and she has a couple glass bottles in there and she feels so fancy, right? And that's like that right there. So I, Cause I'm looking out for her fertility at this point. Like I just want a happy, fertile girl that, you know, woman, young woman, as she ages, I don't want that to be a factor. Cause it's such a huge, massive factor nowadays. Anyway, little things like that, you know, if you're going to invest in a, a high quality, shoot, I have a foundation. It's not even, a, it's a tinted moisturizer, very clean. It's not super cost prohibitive, but then I also have this lovely serum that I use that is also kind of expensive and I don't go through a ton of either, but I mix them together. So both go further, you know, it's like little, little tweaks where you can buy a nice thing that maybe you invested some money in, but you're going to take care of it. You're going to have it forever. I mean, this is something our parents and grandparents really understood that we don't get We're in, you know, especially the younger generation, everything is disposable and plastic, like you said. And speaking of plastic, I just have to input this so people can hear it. You know, phthalates, were actually developed as estrogens medically. And they found that they softened plastic. So they put them in plastics, (laughs) knowing it was developed as an estrogen. You know, 
what was it? Splenda was developed as an insecticide. And they found out it was sweet. And they, by accident, because the story goes, the guy in the lab, there was like a language barrier and the head scientist told the tech to test it, but he thought he said, taste it. So he tasted it and it got sent out to market with very little oversight. And uh, most drugs, most all these things end up to, to market with very little oversight, very small, not significant studies. So that's where we go back to these, these three letter agencies do not give a shit about you. And they are pumping out what they need to pump out for convenience of the almighty dollar and convenience for the companies that are selling this crap. And it's only later, sometimes decades, do they go, oh no, we messed up. It's like, guys. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're so right. And that's kind of the, you know, someone that's been aware of this stuff now for 30 years from my dad and you as well. And when you really look at it, it's still hard to acknowledge that that we as humans have allowed this to be blasted in our society. I, I like I my my moral compass is so that's why I, like sitting on the deck and when I was writing my one of my points that I didn't quite finish was I would find myself swearing out loud to myself because I'm like, this is a Twilight Zone episode. Yes. <laughs> like, this is literally, we're living a Twilight Zone. What do you mean you're calling it out and you know what it is? Yeah. You, kn you knew the genesis of this material and you're allowing children and humans to consume it and having loopholes so that you don't have to declare it or it's a fragrance or it's a flavoring system and has some sort of and then it's a very important point that you brought up in the sense that over and over again because there everyone still believes that there is some omnipresent agency that has deemed what you are pushing your cart in the aisles that these products are relatively safe you you believe that how could they possibly be on the shelf for me to buy if someone wasn't looking out for the safety? And when you come to realize, no, it's only upon an overwhelming evidence, then they start. That's why this comes up all the time. All of a sudden, like, I forget that I don't want to be wrong in what I'm saying, but it was a it was an orange product that Coca-Cola company had and I was already finished with the book. And so my radar was up all over the place and there was a, you know, it was a product that was like fake orange juice. And Oh yeah. It was simply, I, it was simply that, orange or simply yeah, some, something, so, yeah. something like that, but it was owned by Coca-Cola company and some agency, whether it was EWG, it wasn't them, but it was some, someone who did a test and there was over 200, PFOS chemicals yeah. and PFOS just so everyone knows if you haven't seen it it's a derivative of, of fluorine gas and it was the grandfather was the Teflon it's slippery it's stain resistant and it's heat resistant so it's really good at its job problem is that it permeates into whatever it's in contact with and so that PFOS is a known carcinogen an endocrine disruptor connected to kidney disease, liver cancer, like it's a, it's got a laundry list. And so it showed up as 200 different derivatives of PFAS in that product. And so then, oh, oh, wow. Uh, so they take it down. But how they get it around that is if they don't really test their own product, they're not liable. Yeah. So they so they use this thing as plausible deniability. Well, yep. we didn't know it was harmful. Oh, okay. Now we'll change our formula. Or like Starbucks has a pumpkin spice with no pumpkin in it, right? And a bunch of chemicals and flavorings and things like that. So th this is the world we're in, and I get it. It's shocking, but this is where do you want to take the agency back and be a little more. But I love what you said. It's reduction that is at the heart of 
of of making a change here mm -hmm. we have been sold the insecurities so much that in order to have fluffy beautiful luscious hair we got to buy all of these things and we our bodies can't possibly have the shine and the bounce and the beauty without it right <laughs> so yes but but in fact if you go back to the foundation that is everything, sleep and water and whole food and exercise from from within and a good freaking attitude, positive mental outlook, like that ultimately is your longevity and your vitality and your attractability. And that is the power. And God forbid we raise the level of sovereignty of that over the your broken idea you could go into the american medical system the industrial medical complex of that you know germ theory insecurity you're broken we'll fix you all of that shit but that's really it's a reducing of this stuff and going back to the basics that i think is the most powerful thing here we just have to become aware of it which is why going through where, the book yeah. i was to say it's where your book comes in i mean that's yeah step number one is knowing what you're dealing with and like you said people do often freak out it it's uh, that's why we cried every morning at, during our class because we were just you know it was funny to watch the neurosis set in naturopathic school because first year all of a sudden everybody we, we learn about the dangers of plastics first year. So now suddenly everybody's eating out of glass jars. So everyone's riding around on their bikes with glass jars and some people get in bike accidents and their glass jars break. Like it's no joke or they'll be walking down the hall and we have glass shattered. So glass jars everywhere. And that, cause nobody could afford Pyrex. So everybody was just using old jars that, you know, so I like have a cupboard full of glass jars. I've finally got my husband to understand my desire to keep the glass jars. <laughs> so everything goes into glass. Right. And then, you you know, second year, we're all replacing our cookware because we learned about Teflon and the canaries dying when you heat the Teflon to a certain, you know, heat. And it just was the slow, like it, it, there was a lot of orthorexia happening because you start realizing what's in your food and, you know, you get neurotic about that. So there's this neurosis setting in over the four years and you can see somebody who's at the end of naturopathic school because they're in like full neurotic mode <laughs> of all the shit that's toxic around them. But then we eventually come around, right? And hopefully, and I see that happening constantly on online, on social media with people is somebody will find my page and they're like, wait, what? And it's like complete meltdown. And then slowly they go through that. It's a journey and this journey takes time. And so to have a book that is you know, easy to navigate and comprehensive and like gives you some, like you said, some DIYs. I think that's key because it, I think it can become so overwhelming that people just freeze and they go into freeze mode and then they don't do anything. And I think it's worse because then they continue. It's like somebody knowing cigarettes are going to give them lung cancer and they keep smoking. It's not like you don't think about that every time you light up, you know, it's like, once you know, you know, you can't take that away from somebody, but and then that becomes like a self-defeating cycle because now you're doing something you know is bad for you. So then you beat up on yourself. That's just no way to go. Like that, that doesn't get anybody anywhere. So I think the knowledge is key for step number one, understanding what you're dealing with and then slowly but surely taking the steps necessary to start to transition your home. And it's yeah. a process like you, I don't, unless somebody is well to do financially, I don't expect them to be able to completely overhaul their cookware, their cosmetics, their cleaning, you know, all of it. And it's a step-by-step -step process. When I met my husband, I came over for the first time to have a sleep over here, like when we were dating and I woke up the next morning and he had gone to work and he had margarine in the refrigerator and I couldn't find the butter. And I was like, I think I got to break up with this guy margarine and then I found this big bin of Folgers coffee and a big plastic bin and I was like uh uh I don't know about this but th so then I started scouting and I found Pyrex I found no plastic containers I found all Pyrex I was like okay I went under his sink all the cleaning products were pretty good they were greenwashed but he was trying you know it was like Myers clean day that's better I mean he's trying so at least you know it was in his 
It was in his data bank. His personal care products were pretty okay. So it was like, okay, okay, this guy's got potential. He's trying, you know, but I mean, even that was a huge step for him to even get to that point. And that actually took probably some intervention by some other women who were like, Hey, why don't you, you know, it's good for your testosterone, clean up your act. But so all this to say, it's a journey and we got to go through it stepwise and then not getting offended. Like you said, like if you do buy something like Myers clean day, I've, I used that for years in my house thinking it was okay. And then when I found out it wasn't, I didn't like get offended at the per I didn't get mad at the person who told me I was just like, Oh shit, I got to do better. You know? So we may be trying to do better. And in fact, getting kind of duped. And that, I think that's where people get hostile is they've been duped and they get mad at whoever the messenger, they shoot the messenger. So, you know, don't shoot the messenger, keep learning, keep being open, check out the book, fatal conveniences and like get your learn on so that you can do better. And then when you know better, you do better. Hopefully that's 100%. my, that's my it, rant. <laughs> yeah, no, it's perfect. And that's what it is. You, you just like, if you want a great life, you got to turn and under, look at your life or else everything's the same. Yeah. And so this is one of those things where it's like you just continue. And yeah, we've all been duped by greenwashed companies and they're like, oh, shit, I had no idea with this product or that product or the slippery stuff, the dental floss in between my my teeth. Oh, shit, that's PFOS. Whoops. I didn't know that, but it was so conveniently used as dental floss. So it's these kind of things. But I, you know, if people feel overwhelmed at the book, I just say, this is a great, you can literally just open the book anywhere. And for the most part, you'll learn something and then take it to a party and say, start the question with, did you know that these chemicals are in your water bottle or you no know, force it on people, but use it as kind of a icebreaker. Did you know that this forever chemical is in your dental floss like you know and then it helps you kind of absorb upon the knowledge and then you apply that knowledge and that's the beauty and that's the integration i don't know about you but i love integrating i love because it's powerful for example i'm wearing um industry of all nations t-shirt it is the one of the most sustainable. I met the owners. They're three Argentinian brothers. I feel good. Like I now I have knowledge of how they make it. I have knowledge of how they support the indigenous people around the world who work with them. And it feels good on my body. And so when I put it on, it's now an experience. And I know that I'm not being exposed to other things. So there is a power in even though these things are small choices, there's a power when you get to integrate and you add the next one and the next one and the next one. And the next thing you know, you're a whole different person, but it doesn't just happen like a light switch. You have yes. to learn, you have to apply, you have to make a different choice. That's life. Some people will, some people won't. Some, th some people do, some people don't, none of our business, but yep. the people that want to uh, be better and have a better life, life is created with uh, micro choices. Life is created with micro choices. I love that. And education is, I know I said it before, but you can't take that away from somebody. Once you know something, you know something. And I don't think that people stand a chance on this planet in this world with how corrupt things are without educating themselves. Yeah. If you don't have a basic understanding of nutrition, regardless of how you choose to eat, if you don't have a basic understanding, you're not going to make it. If you don't have a basic understanding of exercise, you're not going to make it. If you don't have a basic understanding of what you're ingesting and putting on you and where it's coming from, like it just takes, you know what? I think you said it best laziness. My husband will go to the grocery store and he knows better, Darren. He, I have taught him. I mean, it, it, it was, I say this because it was baby steps with him. You don't just enter a man's life who's 40, you know, in his late forties and throw all this information at him. They think you're insane. So <laughs> it's dating in your forties as an naturopathic doctor is not easy because <laughs> it's like, oh, we'd sound like we're from a cult and we're right. You know, we, we are, and we're right. So it's like, <laughs> 
baby steps. So it took, it takes me about nine months. I would say nine months to a year to really like integrate somebody into my world of weirdness. And I had to do baby steps with him and I still have to introduce concepts. And he's like, why didn't you tell me that three years ago? I'm like, cause it would have really upset you then. And I'm just trying to, I got to deliver it when you're going to hear it. <laughs> That's the art, right? It's like the gauging. wisdom of the woman. Yeah. <laughs> gauging it just right. But he'll go to the grocery store and he buys all this crap and I, he gets home and I'm like, babe, we can't eat this. And then he gets offended and mad because he came from a really, you know, like not a very rich family. They're very Christian. You don't waste food. And I'm like, I'm still not eating this. Like, I'm sorry, but I, like you should have just turned it around and put your readers on and read it. Should have just taken <laughs> two seconds. And so that was it. It's like, I finally said, you're being lazy. Don't go to the grocery store if you're going to be lazy. Let me go. Or don't be lazy. Because if you just took two seconds to look at the second ingredient, you would realize it's not something that we're going to want to eat. And he's like, okay, okay. So it just, it, it's a habit change really more than anything. And people just have to prioritize that habit change. I think it's wonderful that I think mothers are the group to go after here because like you said, you know, they can teach their children, they can do things with their children, but they're the ones that care the most. I think the, the young mothers especially are the ones that kind of have the epiphany. And I see it all the time with my friends who become mothers. They go from being like glamazon, makeup, all the things to suddenly getting very simple. They're not wearing any makeup. They're, you know, not putting anything in their hair because they don't want to go in through their breast milk. And so that's a wonderful time for people to come to conclusions. But I think any age, and we don't have to beat ourselves up and say, well, you know, I did this for 50 years and damn it. I'm just going to keep, that's my parents. They just keep doing stuff to, I don't know, out of spite sometimes, but really it's just small incremental shifts and investments in your time and in your education. And I think that things start to pan out. I want to ask you a couple things though, because I, so I'm lucky I have very sensitive skin. So my skin reacts to everything. And then I know that it's not good for me. So I learned that way. That's how I started learning was as a kid, I was like, what the hell? Why do I have a rash all the time? You know? But menstrual products, what are your thoughts on the menstrual products out there? Well, uh, which ones? I mean, the, <laughs> like you said, the toxic shock of using period-based applicators in a very sensitive, absorbable area is, that is like, I can't believe, I just, I literally can't believe it, that we're a petroleum fragrance-filled petrol, you know, phthalate rich endocrine disrupting knowingly selling that to women is you know these things are on the verge of cr being criminal they like, are criminal yeah and it's so and again it's like we're apathetically adopted a culture that just continues and unless you stop and have someone tell you and show you just do what you do and you buy what you can buy. And they're, again, they're available and they're marketed to us. And so, yeah, the vulnerability of the menstrual products and the vulnerability of the endocrine disrupting chemicals, because it's almost like it's homeopathic in the wrong direction. Yeah. Right. It's, we're, we're playing with the master commanders of our entire biology. And without giving that a break, we're literally sprinting towards ovarian cancer to endometriosis to infertility on the female side and absolutely on the male side. You know, if I was an alien and I looked at the numbers, I would be like, oh, you guys are trying to get rid of yourself. <laughs> yes. Right? You're Agreed. Like, you're, oh, you're literally trying to do that because it makes no sense. Like, I don't know why you guys would be as a society would be trying to extinct yourself, but that's what the numbers are showing. And then the people that you've put in a position to help the most are the third leading cause of death. So it's like <laughs> from a physician yes. practitioner standpoint. So, yes. And it maybe even split to number two. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah, it, it, these things are. And then fragrances on top of it, just the perfumes and the lotions. I mean, on average, a woman is exposed to uh, the, every day 126 chemicals. And most of these fall into that c probable carcinogenic place as well as endocrine disruptive. To your point, these xenoestrogens that are, that are 
you know, we're running around. Why don't I feel good? Where do I, why, where, how come I don't have energy? How come I don't have a good mental outlook? Because we're being toxified in every direction. And so yeah. this is like, we can come down to, oh, you're getting a few little chemicals. The, the, if you look at the aggregate of this book and what I just said with the fun story of being an alien, come, no, this is a really, really big problem. And the problem about the problem is there's not a there's not one smoking gun right has been allowed to exist in our society with the delusion that there is again someone you know taking responsibility and and proving these things are safe none of these things have been proven safe virtually i didn't want to waste my time but for me this invisible world of these chemicals and these products and these stress inducing electromagnetic fields and the toxic clothes like might as well be putting on a water bottle uh, on your body and working out in it every day and transdermally sucking in more chemicals like this stuff is it's ridiculous i know that's what gets me is like i know and i'm in it i'm like literally head to toe in my polar fleece right now because <laughs> <laughs> i'm freezing and i'm like oh i know i know it's hard. It that, You bring up a point though. For me, it comes down to harm reduction and picking my poisons quite literally. So I, I actually, there's a urine panel you can run that looks at, you know, your toxic load and mine actually comes up very low, which is incredible. I pick my poisons very carefully and I offset them as best I can with lifestyle, such as sauna, et cetera. I wasn't always that way, but it's kind of like my tattoos. People are, somebody always inevitably online is like, did you know you're toxic? Your tattoos are toxic. I'm like, no shit, lady. I, like I have how many degrees and how, like how much do I read liter scientific literature all the time? Yes, I knew. I knew going in, I picked that poison very intentionally, like knew what I was getting into. So that's where I think people can, um, to have a little, I'm not saying wiggle room, but some freedom with it. Hopefully that doesn't. So people that are feeling overwhelmed, it's like, you know, the other day I was with my daughter, I needed a tampon. She had one, she buys the stupid, you know, the thing that makes me the most angry about what you just said about tampons is they're marketing the most toxic ones to the little girls, the teen ones, the teen ones that smell good and are pink. And, you know, I mean, it's just such nonsense. And the, the reason they slide out of that applicator is because they're all full of the applicators full of PIFAs and phthalate. It's terrible. Anyway, she had a toxic tampon and I was like, well, I'm going to do the best I can and I'll get it out of me as soon as I can. Right. Like I don't freak out. I don't melt down. I just did what I had to do on that note. I don't, I'm sure you got into this or you heard about this. It was probably coming out or coming to light the same time your book came out as the period panties, you know, the period underwear that was replacing all of us using the tampons. It turns out those were full of PFAS too. You know, it's, you just can't get away from this stuff. So all that to say is we can do the best we can and then reduce what you're willing to reduce and pick your, pick your battles, right? Pick your poisons where you're going to, because not everybody can over, again, not everyone can overhaul everything all at once. But there are things that we definitely should prioritize. So I think putting toxic things up your hoo-ha is probably at the yeah. top of that list. You know, the pads themselves, how they absorb all the water. Can you talk about that? Like the chemicals in there, it's like the same stuff in baby diapers. That absorbent chemical is, oh Yeah, the, yeah, these things are, you know, when it when it's too good to be true, it is. Right. So these these absorbent things like the 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 surface area, the the chemicals, the the surface area of the petroleums that they're using, all of these things. So these, you know, again, it's proximity. And and I think you brought up a good point, which helps the overall aspect of this stuff is once you start to reduce the exposure, then you have more resiliency. The yes. problem is that the cup spilleth over. If you're not doing anything, then any extra stress, any extra flu season, well, you're already dealing with these 126 toxins. You're not changing anything. You're drinking out of whatever. You're eating whatever. You're eating a fast food. You're tough. So the overwhelming body burden is really what we're talking about. So yes, reduce 
so that when, because we, we will and we are exposed unless you literally go out to a cabin in the middle of nowhere and live. And even then, <laughs> yeah even then <laughs> we, we, it's in the air <laughs> yeah we we've, we've hit all areas uh and you know our little friend elon musk is putting fifty thousand micro um satellites and blasting the planet with the electromagnetic field oh, so no. you, you know so all of these things are uh are happening so we have so much power to reduce we have so much power to make shifts and uh and again it's like anything when someone call it someone wants to lose weight you get used to how you feel and you think that this is just who i am i feel a certain way and then when you do an exercise program and you commit to it and then three weeks later you've lost 20 pounds you feel like a million bucks that's in <laughs> inherently the human structure is i'm all right i feel okay yeah, I'm going to so, slack off. <laughs> yeah, so you don't do, but well, when you commit to something and you do it, then you get on the other side and you go, oh my God, I never knew yeah. that I could feel this good. So that's the beauty and the double-edged sword. When you start to integrate and reduce this exposure, you feel better and better and better. And then you have more energy, you have more clear thought, then you're able to be a better person or create more or dare I say invest more of what you want your dream life to be like that's where it all comes down for me is my dad exited this world really a lot faster than he should have and had a lot of dreams and if there was anything that I saw I was like I want to kick ass in my life like and so I want to eat the best so I've dedicated half of my life now to health and running around and finding herbs and plants and all that stuff. And all, now this other side is like, Hey man, there's a toxic world. I don't know where the fuck we decided that was a good idea, but we did. So now what can we do about it to, so that we eliminate this, this downside that is really, again, it turns on the apathy. It yes. turns on the, it lowers our energy. We not, it, for us, for us men and women, our testosterone gets lowered. So we have less and less, uh, hey, I want to kick some ass. Like I want to, I want to live. I want to like, we need that yep. in, in order for us to. So my lens of wanting to write this book is so that we can have more warriors living the life that we truly truly want and yeah you can get bogged down and well it's because of this government and that thing fuck all of that yes we still have so much choice and the people like us who are even listening to us are in this such a small amount so how dare us not yes take on more so that we can live the life that we want so we can like there's fucking suffering all over the place and so that's where i kind of like i want the next part of my life dedicated to the sovereign agency to for other people to be able to have better food to have stronger health to to have cleaner water like all of these things i want people to have the option because <laughs> it, it, it's just not it's just not society's just not in a place i think that that is the best use of our human time here so let's use it better and let's take you know some power back and we can do that through the choices of the things that we're buying and the things that we're also cultivating um uh, you know we have a lot more power than what we're than than what we're told and we always have the numbers on our side we have you know eight billion of us yes uh, and there's a handful of companies that are you know don't give a shit i mean probably a lot more than that but a handful of them own all of them right so yep uh so we have the numbers um so let's make better choices i love that 
I think that's a perfect place to end because that's exactly it. It's you are voting with your dollars and your choices. And the first step is to educate yourself and then start to make the changes. And again, if not for you, do it for your lineage, you know, do it for either the people that you in- interact with, your community, or more importantly, your children, uh, your family and your loved ones, because all we can do is and something I've really always loved about you is you just lead by example. You're kind of soft spoken. You're not out there trying to, you know, you're not yelling down people's throats. You just lead by example. And that's, you've done a great job of it thus far. <laughs> you're, you're aging well. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. I, cho- I, I choose the way I have a long game and I have a long lens and I, and so there's a lot of things that, because I also, it, it, it's it's easy to get caught into the reactive world because it's kind of wanting us to. Yes. And yeah, I can go off with a handful of my friends pretty easily, but what do I, what am I ultimately committed to? Yeah, it's the long game. It is the long game. I love it. Okay, Darren, tell everybody where they can find you. So the book is Fatal Conveniences. I'm guessing that's available everywhere. Yep. Everywhere that you love to buy books, DarrenOlean.com, Darren Aline Show, Darren Aline Socials, all of that stuff. So easy to find me. Awesome. I learned something I wanted to share with you. I interviewed a friend who is releasing a book and he told me about a website called bookshop.org and Mm. they will get any book that you want and have it delivered to your local bookshop. If you purchase a book through that website, they will deliver it to your local bookshop for you to pick up. If you're wanting to kind of, you know, avert the Amazon empire. (laughs) So I I wrote that down to remind me to tell you, because I thought you would appreciate that. (laughs) That's very cool. Yes. And so Instagram and you are on a show with Zach Efron down to earth. That's a super fun show too. If you guys want to check out Darren in action, I know you as the superfood hunter. So you've got other books out there too. There's a lot. Darren's been around a while. He's There's a lot of, of gold here in this man. So check it all out. We'll put links in the show notes. So, well, thank you so much for coming back on the show. It's so fun to talk to you always. And I hope we can stay in touch more than we have the past couple of years because now I, I know where to find you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been great. And uh, thank you for all the work that you've done. And uh, even though you've gained some scars in the process, you've helped a lot of people. Thank you. It's all right. I'm 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 tougher for it. So, okay, <laughs> cool. Thanks, Darren. Thanks.